So you spend all of this time preparing for a gig and you may have even turned down other gigs to do this gig and then it gets canceled at the last minute. How do you deal with this? Well, let's talk about it. Hey, and welcome to Music Space, where we help working musicians just like you learn how to quickly and easily make a living with your craft. So if you're new here to the channel, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. That way you'll be notified when new videos are uploaded. So there comes a time in every musician's career where a gig will get canceled. And sometimes it's not that big of a deal, like if you're booked eight months out and then the gig gets canceled, say six months out, not a huge deal, but still a cancellation. And these kinds of cancellations can have an impact for sure. But again, generally speaking, it's not that big of a deal. You still got time to book another gig if you choose. But also there are times when it's a really big deal. Like you've spent a lot of time practicing and rehearsing for this gig and you've spent a lot of other resources making sure you're ready for this gig, you know, you and your band or just you by yourself, and then it gets canceled last minute. And in some cases, these cancellations are extreme as, you know, like the day before or sometimes even day of or hours before the gig is supposed to happen. And this can be impactful in a lot of ways, not only financially, but sort of psychologically as well. Like a lot of musicians really get angry and upset about things like this, and they lose trust with the people who hired them for the gig in the first place. And granted, this anger sometimes is justified because there are still people out there like janky promoters and things like that who try to get over on you. So again, sometimes it's justified. But the bigger part of this is that musicians tend to, you know, not want to put in that time and that practice and that preparation for gigs in the future for fear that they will be canceled. They start to develop this attitude of, well, I'm not going to put that much time into it because, you know, it may get canceled. I've had people cancel on me before. And that attitude sort of persists through their music career. And that then affects the way that they tend to show up, which is usually not their best and not showing up as your best has a trickle down effect. So you don't show up as your best, audiences don't see you as good or you know a great band, so people tend not to hire you as much, which means less money in your pocket. Now keep in mind too that some cancellations are just inevitable and they're really no one's fault. So say like a snowstorm or a hurricane or even COVID happens, you know, there's nothing that can really be done about that and it's no one's specific fault. So just understand that these cancellations are part of the game and they happen from time to time. So what I'm gonna do here is share with you some ways to deal with cancellations that prevent you from taking such a big hit when they happen. Now, right before we get into that, if you're getting value out of this video so far, or you get value out of my videos on this channel, do me a quick favor and hit the subscribe button and the like button on this video. Go ahead and do that now. That lets me know that you appreciate this content and it lets me know the type of content I should make for you in the future. Okay, so one of the first ways that you can deal with these cancellations that prevent you from taking such a big hit is sort of an easy but obvious way as well, and that is to get a deposit. Getting a deposit should be like standard and a normal thing that you do when you get hired from people in venues. It's just really good business practice. It shows that the venue or the people that are hiring you are serious and it also shows them or helps them understand or help ensure that you will be there and you will be present for what they're hiring you for. So it's sort of a win-win situation. Now, if you perform or play in clubs and bars and things like that regularly, I do understand that getting a deposit in a lot of these situations can be difficult. Generally speaking, if it's not something that they do for bands or musicians that they hire, it's probably going to be kind of hard to get them to give you a deposit. But even in cases like this, you can do other forms of deposits or what I like to refer to as guarantees. So something like just a simple gentleman's agreement where if something gets canceled or you get canceled on a night, that they agree to hire you again in the future or the following week or the following month. And there are plenty of other ways to put these sort of guarantees or deposit type of things in place as well. But this is something that will definitely guarantee you to not take such a big hit if in fact your gig gets canceled. Now, another thing you can do to prevent yourself from taking such a big hit in these situations where gigs get canceled 
is make a habit of verifying that the gig is on before you turn down any other gigs. This is another thing that should really just be good practice, especially in cases where you book gigs like far out. And even if it's something like where the gig is only like a month or a couple of weeks away, you know, when it gets closer to that date, you need to start verifying that the date is on. And even if no one else is calling you for the same date that you're already booked on, it's just good practice to do this because it allows them to give you details and allows you to get details or anything that's changed, you know, from the time they book you for the gig until the week of the gig or the day before the gig. So things like parking or, you know, what's gonna be required when you get there as far as the load in or the loading dock and things like that. All of this can get done during that time you're verifying that the gig is still on. And this also serves the purpose of keeping the people you're playing with or the people that hired you abreast and aware that you intend to be there. And I know this may sound, you know, kind of trivial, but you know, during that time of the week of the gig or days before the gig or the day of the gig, especially things can get a little tense if they haven't heard from you. And if you haven't checked in and things like that. So this verification process or the verification thing, just calling to check in, just puts everybody at ease, you know, the day of the gig, and it makes everything smooth the night of the gig that you're playing. And of course, more importantly to the point, this lessens the chances of something happening where you get canceled for something like the day before, and you've turned down a gig to do this gig and you didn't even know that it was canceled. So definitely make sure you check in and verify that the gig is on ahead of time. Now, another thing you can do to cut down on the loss of cancellations is hold the person or the people who hire you responsible for those cancellations. So what I mean here is what you can do is sort of split the loss of any cancellations that occur with the person or the people who hired you. And what this would look like in terms of money is you can make a deal with the person who hired you or the people who hired you that if something happens or the deal goes through or the gig falls through, that they're responsible for a certain percentage of the pay that they, you know, were going to hire you for. What it really is, is just a cancellation fee. And this is something that is very common in the professional musician industry, but it doesn't have to be a money thing. It could be, you know, something like some of the things I named prior, like they can make an agreement to hire you again for the following week or the next week or the next gig, or, you know, something that's coming up in the future or really any kind of thing that doesn't make this cancellation a complete bust for you. It could be something as simple as if the gig gets canceled, they have to buy you lunch or buy you dinner or buy you a drink. And you may be thinking that something like this sounds a little trivial or a little petty or whatever, but I'm telling you, this is something that keeps the people who hire you on their toes and they know that they can't just, you know, come to you any kind of way or hire you if the circumstances aren't, you know, definite or certain. Now, of course, on your end, it helps that when you show up and, you know, when you do take gigs that you show up prepared, ready, you show up professional, you know, the music and all of that kind of stuff. You can't show up late or be non-professional or not know the music and make these sorts of demands. That's just not gonna work. And in fact, that's the case with all of the things that I'm talking about here. The more you show up and be professional and know the music and all of that kind of stuff, the better you position yourself to be able to make these sorts of agreements and guarantees and demands. But putting some of the responsibility of a cancellation loss on the people who hired you or the person who hired you is definitely something that will prevent you from taking such a big hit if in fact something gets canceled. Now, another thing that can prevent some of these cancellation losses is, and this is very important, but you can't be canceling on people, you know, on the regular yourself. So it should be stated that a lot of times, a lot of these cancellations happen on you because you have in fact canceled and flaked on other people before. It's just a matter of principle that if you're this type of person that does this regularly, it's gonna come back on you. And not only that, you will become the person that gets called last only in dire situations where somebody just can't find anybody else. It's like, okay, let's just call him or her. So say a situation happens where like this band has, you know, a group of musicians that they normally play with, say a drummer and that drummer can't make the gig for some reason. And they call you to do the gig but you've been known to cancel on people and flake on people before. And then something changes like the week of the gig where now their normal drummer is available. Guess what's gonna happen? They're gonna drop you like a bad habit with no remorse. Why? Because you've done it to them before or you have the reputation of doing this to other people. 
and this one is kind of self-evident, but just make sure you honor your agreements and keep your commitments when you agree to do gigs and don't flake and don't cancel on people when possible. And that will definitely cut down on the cancellations that occur that come your way. Now, another thing you can do to help prevent some of these cancellation losses is just another general good practice thing. And that is respond to the messages that you get for the gigs that are canceled. So in the instances where gigs do get canceled, make sure you respond to these messages that you get. This is something that's really important that a lot of people overlook. So if you get a text message or an email or, you know, a Facebook message or whatever that says, hey, the gig we had Saturday night is canceled, you know, sorry about that. Make sure you reply or respond to these messages. Don't just leave them hanging. And I've done a video on this whole subject of communication and replying and responding to gig text. And I'll link that in a card above. So make sure you check that video out. But it's enough here just to say that this is something that is really important that you need to make part of your sort of ritual and habit when it comes to these cancellations. And this is something that falls under that good communication category. And good communication, I'm telling you, is something that will take you really far. It will take you a long way in this industry. And think about it, in the cases where gigs get canceled and they send you a message, you know, saying that the gig is canceled, it just helps the person, if nothing else, it just helps the person who, you know, hired you, who's sending you that text message, let, it lets them know that you got it and that you're not just gonna show up at the venue saying, hey man, where are you guys? I'm here ready to play. And think about it, it could be the case that the gig got canceled on Saturday night is just postponed to the next Saturday night or, you know, a couple of weeks later or a month later or whatever. And you not responding to this text message that says the gig is canceled, doesn't allow the person to be able to give you that information. So it makes it more likely that they're just gonna hire somebody else and put somebody else on that new postponed or rescheduled date, and that's money out of your pocket. So this is really simple. Just make it a habit, make it a regular thing that you do to respond to these messages that you get for cancellations and things like that. But the question is for you, how do you handle cancel gigs? Do you even get canceled on gigs normally or regularly, or is it something that happens from time to time? If so, how do you handle it? How do you respond to the messages and things like that? I'm really curious to know, so jump down in the comment section and let me know your thoughts on that. And listen, thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope that it was helpful for you and gave you some insight on this subject. And also, there's a lot of resources in the description of this video and all my videos. Things like a free ebook that helps you make more money, contracts and things like that that you can use for your business and to get booked when you're getting booked as a band and a lot of other things. So be sure to jump down in the description and check those out. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the like button on this video. And here are some other videos that you can check out right now.